Hello, and my name is Lee Zhang. You can call me Harry. So I work for, I work for Alibaba, and this is my colleague Xiao Yu, and he also works for Alibaba as well. Uh, so let's go to this um, topic today. And before I talk about container runtime, I will I would like to give you the very brief introduction of, about how Kubernetes is actually designed. So in Kubernetes, we actually have two concepts. The first concept is control plan or control plan, control panel or control plan. So in control panel, you actually can, can think it about three components. First of all is API server, which is the component to uh, handle all the requests from users, from the player systems. And also there is a controller manager, which is responsible for the workloads orchestration. For example, deployment, stateful state, all of these concepts, they're actually using controllers to handle the requests and the workloads from the um, end users. And also, there is a, the third part of the control plan is uh, scheduling, the Kubi scheduler. And it is responsible to find a proper node for every part created by user. And beside the control plan, the, the, other, the other parts of Kubernetes is, is, is called the nodes. So every, every virtual machine or host machine of a Kubernetes will have an engine which name is Kubernetes running inside. So it will be responsible to uh, watch the pod list and then create a pod on the node for you. Um, so in, mo in most general cases, Kubernetes will try to call the Docker API or container the API for that, to do that. But if you want to install a Kubernetes cluster, I think there is a step that you need to consider is what kind of a runtime I want to choose. Just as I mentioned today, at least you can choose to use Docker or ContainerD, right? So actually in the community, there are multiple open source container runtime for you to make choice. For example, ContainerD and Alibaba has its own punch container. You can choose Cryo from Red Hat. Uh, you can, of course, use Docker. So after you choose a proper runtime you want, then you can just install the container runtime in your machine, and then you can deploy Kubernetes on top of that. One of the instances I will uh, give more details about is if you choose, for example, use ContainerD, then you need to deploy ContainerD binary in every node of your cluster. And then, of course, you don't need to deploy Docker in that case. And the responsibility of, Do of ContainerD is that it will actually call the OCI runtime. For example, in this case, it runs C, to transfer your pod description into the Linux system call, for example, clone, set NS, or something like that. And the Linux kernel will be responsible to translate, uh, to use this system call to create the real container for you. But what is container? In this case, as long as you are using Linux kernel, then what you are creating is a Linux container. The Linux container can be separated to two concepts. The first concept is container runtime, which is implemented by using, for example, C groups to, to as the resource limitation. And the second thing is namespace to, to, to do an isolated view for you. So the namespace is basically to create an isolated environment so the process inside the container cannot see the process in another namespace or on a host. And the C groups are used to uh, give you resource boundary of this container. For example, I, 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 only, want to, I want, only want to this container to use at most one CPU core and, and uh, 200 megabit memory. Then you just set these limits to C groups. So this is what container runtime is doing for you. But the second thing is container image, which is actually a wonderful creation by Docker company. And the container image is actually the static view of your program. And it actually includes everything your program needs to run. For example, the operating system directories, the files, all the dependencies, the applications. So the container image uses um, overlay file system to wrap, to wrap everything inside the package. And this package, which normally technically can be called as rootFS. So in this photo, in this picture, you can see how container runtime and container image are combined together to uh, create a container for you. So you basically have the process running on top of a group of root FSs. And this process, this process is, is a normal process on your host. And the only difference is that this process is isolated in, by a group of namespaces, and the resource it can use is restricted by C groups. That's all. So that's why we say Linux container is just another kind of a process. But here's the problem. So today we are talking about serverless. We are talking about managing huge clusters on top of the cloud. But one thing, if you want to use serverless, you have to face or you have to fix the issue is the hard multi-tenancy. So when, when you are using Linux container, as I said, this content, its container runtime is actually implemented by namespace in C groups. 
namespaces and cgroups are vulnerable against hackers. For example, you, I think you, you guys might have heard about the term of jailbreaker, right? If you had a process running inside Linux container, for example, Docker on container D, it's actually very easy for this container process to get out of, to escape the container. This is actually one of the important issues we have to face today, and that's why I think for for every cl public cloud provider, they will give you virtual machines first, and then run your container inside, because we need to rely on the virtual machines to do, to as the multi-tenancy resource boundary for you, instead of the C groups and namespaces. But as the community is evolving, they begin to become more and more technologies for you to achieve stronger isolation in the runtime layer. So first of all, I think you guys may have heard about the cut containers. I actually uh, worked for Hyper before, so uh, I'm actually uh, one of the member of Kata teams. And also, uh, Amazon open sourced its own version of uh, virtual machine based container runtime, which name is Firecracker. But Firecracker works more on the virtual machine management manager layer. So, and also we know Google has open source GVisor, which is originally from the Google, Google, uh, Google app engine team. So it will give you another approach um, by implementing a guest kernel using Go language. So you basically will have a very small kernel to run your container. So it, it is different from what we are using in cut containers, which will use um, hypervisor to do that. But if you looking at these container runtimes, you will, fi you will find that there are essential differences, no matter you are using GeoEther or Kata container. So the difference is here. For example, if you are using Kata, for, if you are using Kata, the container runtime is not implemented by C groups or namespace at all. It is actually implemented by hardware virtualization, just like a normal virtual machine. And the most important thing is you will have a guest kernel in this container. Instead of, instead of sharing the guest kernel of the, in, instead of sharing the kernel of your host machine. This is also the case for GVisor, but GVisor actually, as I said before, will, will implement a guest kernel for you. It's, it's called a century. But no matter what kind of technology you're using today, you will have an independent kernel. Well, comparing to that, if you want to achieve hard multi-tenancy when using Linux container, there are a bunch of things you need to do. For example, you need to, um, you need to figure out how to drop uh, some Linux capabilities you don't want to expose to a user, or you need, and, and also you will need to um, mount a read-only mount points in, inside your container, and you will have to use uh, several kinds of technologies like uh, Secure Linux or App Armor to, to give you a stronger isolation for your Linux containers, and, and so on. So this is actually two different approaches. So today, I would like, like to talk a little bit more about the container runtime, which has an independent guest kernel, for example, GVisor or Kata container. I will use Kata container as an example here. So if you are using Kata containers, you will basically have two, you will basically have different implementation for container runtime, but the same implementation for container image. And the difference for container runtime, the most important thing is, first of all, it will have the independent guest kernel, and you are using hardware virtualization technology to implement the resource boundary or isolation boundary of your container. But another thing you need to um, pay attention to is that for cut containers, because it's basically a virtual machine, so this concept, this resource boundary, will be mapping to the pod concept instead of container itself. As I mentioned at the beginning, Kubernetes uses a pod to run an application, and the pod is a group of containers. So if you are actually create a pod in, in Kubernetes, which is Kata as a runtime, you will actually create a virtual machine as a pod. And then you will run containers inside this virtual machine. And these containers are still implemented by namespaces and state groups. So as, as you can see here, um, uh, the virtual machine of Kata is actually mapping to pod. Okay, so here is the first thing. As I said, we can use Kata or at any kind of sandbox container runtime to implement multi, hard multi-tenancy in runtime layer. But the question is, how Kubernetes use these runtimes? And the key, key of sandbox the runtime in Kubernetes is actually called Container Runtime Interface, which can be short as CRI. So in Kubernetes, it actually has no, it, it is not aware of the underlying container runtimes. Kubernetes only know it is actually uh, talking with an uh, interface, which name is CRI. For example, you can see um, this example here. The CRI is an interface built in Kubernetes 
aka the agent of Kubernetes. And it is actually a gRPC-based interface. And that means every container runtime which want to integrate with Kubernetes have to implement its own version of CI implementation, which in our community, it is named CI Shim. And the CR stream is actually a gRPC server, and it, it will translate your CRI request to the underlying container runtime API. For example, if you are using container D, the CR stream of container D will actually call the container D API to do rest of the things. This is actually how CRI works. So as you can see here, the CRI is actually describing container runtime for Kubernetes. So Kubernetes only understand what is CRI. It will never understand what is Docker. And on the upstream, we are actually working on another um, proposal to remove the built-in Docker shim from Kubernetes. Because as, as I think you guys might know that Kubernetes has a built-in shim for Docker right now. But we are re removing that part. So in the future, Kubernetes will not have a so-called default runtime. The default container runtime for Kubernetes will always be CI. And also, if you pay attention to the implementation of CI, you will, see, you will notice that it is actually a container-centric interface. There's not pod stuff in the uh, CI. The reason we do that is because not every container runtime has a concept of pod. For example, if you are in, you in Kata, Kata has a concept of pod because Kata is a virtual machine. But if you're in Docker, if you're in other Linux containers, they only know about containers. So there is no some kind of pod in Docker. So we want to leave the freedom to how to implement a pod to the container runtime itself. So in that case, if you are running a CI shim for Docker, for example, the Docker shim, you are actually need to think about how to implement the so-called pod concept in your, uh, how to implement the pod model in your container run runtime. The container spec is very simple in CI um, uh, interface. And it actually can be divided into two parts. The first part is sandbox. That means how can you implement the pod model, which we call sandbox. Uh, at another, uh, uh, again, the example of Kata, we will use the virtual machine to implement as the sandbox. But if you're using Docker, there is no this kind of sandbox. It, it will actually, cre actually create a so-called infra container for you. So in, if you're in Docker or Linux container, the infra container will actually map into the sandbox. And the sandbox is exactly equivalent to pod lifecycle. So that, that also means uh, if you create a pod, there it, it, it can be true that this pod does not have any container inside. That means, for example, you only have infra container, but there's no user container. Uh, and if you're in Kata, that means you have the virtual machine, but there's no container inside that, that, that Kata virtual machine. Okay, so uh, here is how CI is, is implemented or working in your Kubernetes cluster. I will give you a very um, brief example. So for the, control pad, for, for the control panel, there's no big difference. Users do not need to know about what, what is the underlying kind of runtime you are using. They just create a pod, and the Kubernetes will schedule the pod to a specific node. And when, when, not, when a pod is finished by the Kubelet to start on the, on the, uh, on the host machine, Kubelet does not need to care about what is under container runtime as well, because Kubelet only need to handle with the CI. So, Unless you are going, you, you are reaching now, going, you are going to the uh, CR shim part, then you need to know about the container runtime of underlying, which is running. So in Kubernetes, there are basically two different kinds of container run, uh, CR shim. The first of all is the building Docker shim. As I said, uh, we will try to remove that part later. And the second is remote. Remote means the Kubernetes will send a gRPC call to the underlying CR shim. And uh, for the rest of the things, as long as it's going into a CR shim, no matter it's Docker shim or uh, any kind of CR shim, the rest of the things is the shim will call the underlying uh, container project API, like Docker or ContainerD. So here's another question. Okay, I know that you, are, you can use CI to manage a lot of container runtimes, so how can we, if, is it possible for we to use multiple container runtimes in, in one cluster? Yes, so one of the push is you can just install many nodes, and every node will have a corresponding CR shim. For example, in this case, your node A will use container D as CR shim, your node C will use cryo as, container runtime shim, as a container runtime. So you don't need to handle that. The, the only thing you need to do is, for example, you can add a label selector on your pod to say, I want to schedule this pod to cryo node or this pod to container D node. This actually is totally possible. 
And that also means in this case, you can use kata. But the one thing you need to pay attention to is kata is actually equivalent to run C. So that's the so-called OCI runtime. So that also means in front of a kata, there should be something, um, well, there should be something acting as a CR sheen. And the most common case in the community is that you can use container D to do that. So in this case, you need to first of all deploy container D and then install kata runtime to replace run C in this case. And in this case, as you can see the picture here, container D will be responsible to handle the rest of the things. In container D, there is another interface. So, so please pay attention to this part. You will basically have two interfaces. The first layer interface is CI. The second layer interface is in container D itself, which name is called Shim V2 API. The Shim V2 API is to handle how container runtime talk with the OCI runtime. So there are a bunch of concepts here. First of all, Kubernetes, CI, container D, which is a CR Shim, and then Shim V2, then run C, or Kata. So this is how basically the container D part work. And the Shim V2 API will translate your API request to the OCI runtime spec, which will be handled by Kata project. And in this case, you can see there is a Kata engine running on your machine and translate your, your request to a Kata spec and then start a virtual machine for you. So this is uh, one of the parts that you can use um, the, 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 the Kubernetes V multiple runtime. Medium. Medium. Okay. Okay, so the second thing I want to mention is that it is actually possible today that you can deploy multiple runtime in single node. So the, 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 the example I just talked about is you can deploy multiple runtime for multiple nodes, but today you can use a feature which name is runtime class, which can make, you, make it possible for you to deploy container runtimes in one node. This is the case. You can now have a Kubernetes running on a node, and then you will install container D and cryo and inside of the machine, and it actually works. Okay, so how can we choose for example, if we have a pod, how can we choose this pod running inside Kata or run C as long as you can have multiple runtime in one node? So here is how you can do that. The feature here, which name is, which name is runtime class. A runtime class is a feature in recent Kubernetes which has been, uh, become beta in uh, 1.14 of Kubernetes. And it will enable you to say, I want to have this pod running in Kata and have this part running in run C. And, and here's the example. So first of all, we need to create a runtime class, for example, which name is Kata, right? The default container runtime, uh, the default runtime class in Kubernetes is now for, for now the run C. So if you want to use Kata, you need to create a container runtime, which name is Kata container, for example. And then you can create a part like this. In the part spec, there's a field for you to use, which name is runtime class name. And you need to, spec, you need to say, okay, I want to use Kata container. And then Kubernetes will try to find the container runtime name, which is Kata container. And also, you need to configure the cut, run, the cut, cut container as a runtime name in your container D. So container D is aware of runtime class. This is actually how container, uh, th this is how the runtime class work. So first of all, the pod will have the field for you to say which container run, which, which runtime class I want to use. And second, container D or any kinds of CI stream now support uh, to figure out, to read the specification from your pod to read what is the runtime class and then choose the underlying OCI runtime for you. So this is exactly how the runtime class for you to, to use. I will ask my colleague to give you a small demo about how to use runtime class in a real cluster. So, so this, is, um, this demo is, uh, is based on um, mini Cooper and the runtime class and the, the Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes version is 1.14. And uh, here we should. Uh, this, this is a demo. Start. First, uh, we should uh, prepare the uh, combination environment uh, and uh, use um, the mini cobalt to show that this demo. And check a uh, version. Uh, 
as Lee said, we use containerd sham v2 and uh, cut a container. So uh, we need to install uh, containerd firstly. Uh, this this configure we, uh, will com uh, will use kata uh, um, runtime. This is actually how containerd will understand what is kata runtime, mm -hmm. as you mentioned in the runtime class part. So you just uh, created a part which mentioned about the cut runtime as your runtime class. And uh, so we could check the cut container, and use, use some, uh, some tool, just, uh, just a new name. Yeah, you can see here, if you are using cut runtime, you are basically you will have an independent guest kernel running inside your cut runtime, a part which has an independent guest kernel from different from your host. Yeah, you can see here. It's different kind of, it's different version of a guest kernel. Okay, so um, as we have mentioned that cut container runtime can help you to solve the isolation problem in your hard multi-tenancy environment, and we also mentioned that you can use the runtime class to specify what part are running in kata and what part do not. So why we do that? Because cut container actually have some limitations for you, for example, um, if you are using, if you want to use your pod to say, I want to use the host networking, then cut con container cannot do that for you because it is using the virtual machine and there's no concept of host networking in the virtual machine. So in that case, you may want to specify that this pod want to use default runtime class, which is run C. Another example is that you, you actually have concern about the, uh, for example, the IO performance in your cutter runtime. Let's say you have the MySQL stuff and want to have this MySQL running, in, running on a very high performance node and give you high performance I.O. You may want also want to consider use uh, run C at runtime. And another thing we want to mention is um, uh, actually you can, uh, as long as you have a cluster which use cut a runtime in the multi-tenancy environment, you can actually uh, build a, a, a multiple service project on top of that. But unfortunately for now, as we can see here, most of the service, open source service platform do not support runtime class in their project because they are generating the, uh, for example, the pod template or deployment template and in that template, the, for now there is no field which name is uh, runtime class. So you, can now, so you cannot now say I want to use, uh, for example, key native to deploy my pod inside a Kata runtime. So we think we can actually uh, try to fix that later. Uh, you, uh, Shall you will explain a little bit about this? Uh, yes, this is uh, uh, this is a use case uh, from the Canal uh, um, website. So uh, usually we want uh, we just uh, t uh, use this case to test our Canal. Uh, so uh, this, this script uh, have no dip, uh, if uh, we we could um, we could define uh, this port. Um, by this script, but uh, if we add uh, this uh, runtime class name uh, into this script, uh, just like uh, uh, we do, uh, we done uh, before, uh, use that uh, demo, um, but uh, it will fail. So now, uh, use uh, the Canary use the CRD, in uh, so it doesn't uh, support uh, this uh, this this specter. So uh, just. Uh, as to uh, Kubernetes, another another open source project, um, we even have no place to edit uh, the runtime class. So there is a uh, still a long journey to go. Yeah, uh, one thing I want to uh, mention is that although there is no runtime class support in most of the open source service platform, but you can actually do it manually. For example, you will you can add an uh, annotation. Um, on, on the pod or a node, and then you use you, you, you use the label selector or something like that, or tolerations to do that. But eventually, we hope that most of the open source project can, can support runtime class. That you can build a, a service on top of Kubernetes and then on your multi uh, on your multi tenancy resource pool. Uh, 
And speaking of that, I want to uh, share a, a small case, user case of, of, our, of how we are using uh, cut container inside Alibaba. So Alibaba actually maintained a very huge Kubernetes cluster, which has like a fi more than 5,000 nodes to serve all the customers in Alibaba. And every business unit in Alibaba is actually a tenant. That's why we build a hard multi-tenancy Kubernetes by using um, cut containers. And for every tenant, the most interesting part is we actually create per tenant per control plane model. That, that, that means every, every tenant in Alibaba will have its own um, API server, uh, could be control manager, but there's no scheduler because we are using a unified scheduler here. But this tenant will actually have no real nodes. The only thing it can see is a group of virtual nodes. So that's why we say this model is a virtual cluster based multi-tenancy. And the virtual node is actually provided by a small engine, which name is the virtual node engine. That is a VNN engine running on every real node. So it will actually virtualize nodes, op, nodes or API object in SADs. Then tenant will see a virtual cluster, which is created, which is provided by a real cluster underlying. So this is basically a Kubernetes on Kubernetes layer, on, on Kubernetes model. The only difference is that there is no tenant layer nodes. The tenant layer nodes are created by using a virtual node concept. We actually have another implementation which can use virtual kubelet to create your uh, to create the virtual uh, virtual nodes. So um, this, this, uh, in this concept, you can see actually we are sharing the underlying real cluster for every tenant, and the and the key part here is that we need to use cut containers as the default container runtime because now we have actually a different tenants running in the same cluster. That's why we need stronger isolation, and that is the most important case we want to use cut container or any kind of a sandbox container instead of run C in our cluster. And this, and this architecture will be open sourced soon, and we will announce it during the KubeCon North America of this year. And, we, and if you are interested in that part, you can check the upstream proposal. We are talking with the uh, upstream working group. So we hope that if you, are, uh, you want to cooperate on that project, you can just connect it with our team. Okay, so I think this is um, basically what we are talking today. And if you have any questions, please, um, I think, feel free to ask. Someone has any questions? <laughs>